recording. So good morning. As people are joining us for worship, please remember that this service is being recorded. In preparation for worship, please take a brief moment to prepare your hearts and minds to worship God, to draw near to God, to sense his holy presence. Amen. Amen. We gather together for worship when we light the candle. As the coronavirus aggressively moves throughout the United States and throughout the world, we know that the way we were living just six months ago is not the way that we will live in the foreseeable future. And we grieve. We grieve the loss of contact with family and friends. We grieve not going out to lunch with friends or going to the movies or shopping or watching, participating in sports. We grieve for what was, even if what was is something that we complained about. Times such as these cause us to reflect on what really is important. And amidst all the twists and turns that come with each day, the loneliness and the isolation, the fear of the unknown, the darkness in our lives, scripture reminds us the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not ever been overcome. And the, we remember that the light that shines in the darkness in Jesus Christ, the light of the world, a light that shines through the darkness will not be overcome. As you see the picture of Jack and Laurel lighting the candle, may the flame remind you of the light of Christ that shines into our lives, offering hope into the future. As John plays the African-American spiritual kumbaya, meaning come by here, we pray for the light of Christ to come by here. Come by here with a message of hope and peace, love and joy. Welcome. Whether we are old or young, whether we are first time or long time worshipers, whether we come full of doubts or confidence, joy or sorrow, 
in this place, we are all family because of what Jesus did for us on the cross. A warm welcome to each of you this day. Good morning, I'm Pastor Jerry, and thank you for joining us in our time together for online worship via Zoom this morning. This week, we thank Jim and Janine Wrightson for serving as the liturgist, Hannah for sharing her gift of singing, being ever so faithful to be available during our services each and every week. Susan Staples Bell, who wrote today's anthem. The virtual choir for faithfully singing their parts while they're home alone and amazed at the quality of the anthem when their individual voices are blended together. We thank John, who directs the choir, syncs all of the voices together, and oversees the behind-the-scene technology. And today, today we welcome Ben Martin, one of CPC's college-age students who is for the first time soloing as the behind-the-scenes Zoom specialist with John supporting him. If you see a reaction button on your screen, you can click on it to give Ben a thumbs up or a high five. Also, a very special thank you for joining us this morning as we worship and glorify God. As we open our lives to God, the opening prayer and gathering words will be led by Jim Wrightson. Following these words, Hannah will sing a verse of, Come sing, O church, and joy. You're encouraged to participate in the responsive readings from home and to sing along with Hannah as she sings. Let Hear now pray. our opening prayer. Let us pray. As, as we prepare for worship, we pray that you will quiet our hearts, that we may hear your voice in your word. We pray that you will stir our hearts, that we may, may more faithfully follow Jesus, and that you will be glorified by the praise and prayers we offer you. Amen and amen. With eyes to see and ears to hear. With lips to sing and hands to help. Let us worship God with the fullness of our being. Come sing, O church, in joy. Come join, O church, in song. For Christ the Lord has led us through the ages long in bold accord. Come celebrate the journey now and praise the Lord. What joy it is to praise the Lord, to be in the presence of God, to celebrate the ways Jesus has led and does lead us in our journeys of faith calling us to be his faithful disciples. We remember Jesus' ways include a call to repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. And so now we repent of our sinfulness. Jim and Janine will now lead us in the call to confession, the prayer of confession, and the assurance of God's grace. When we gather to praise God, we remember that we are people who have preferred our wills to his. Accepting his power to become new persons in Christ, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Let us pray. Creator God, you have planted the seeds of life within each of us. Through baptism, you pour your sacred waters upon us, and you empower those seeds to begin to grow. By shining the light of your word upon us, you nourish those seeds and enable them to flourish. But we often neglect the spiritual garden that resides within us. We allow the weeds of sin to spread. We permit vines of evil to entrap us, choking our desire to follow in your ways. Forgive us for the ways that we have failed to be grounded in your love, a love which produces a harvest that proclaims who you would have us be. Root out from us all that is unclean and lead us into the way of life everlasting. We'll now have a time for silent personal confession. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. 
Amen. God reaches out to us, offering forgiveness, making us whole, drawing us into the body of Christ. God blesses, calls, and equips us to share the good news that is ours in Christ. And now, as God has given us peace through Christ, so let us pass the peace of Christ to each other. The peace of Christ be with each of you. Share this peace with someone sitting close to you at your home or by stretching out your hand towards the screen and saying, the peace of Christ be with you. And now for the prayers of the people in the Lord's Prayer. I'm sharing a prayer written by um, Jill Duffield, who is the editor of Presbyterian Outlook. Let us pray. Lord, we come to this time of prayer with the intention to set our minds on you and on the Spirit. Even as we are tempted to give into worldly priorities and earthly idolatries, we yearn to know the peace that comes from surrendering to your will. Like the crowd so long ago, we want to hear the transformative and life-giving message that Jesus came to proclaim. We are eager to know your saving word, and we are bold to share our most pressing needs and deepest hopes with you. Hear us as we pray for those hard paths in our lives and in your world. When we grow weary of walking the same direction and wondering if painful circumstances will ever change, help us to find small fissures in our hardened hearts that can still shelter gospel hope. Do not let our communities become inhospitable places for your presence, worn down by treading the same way and unwilling to leave what we know. Show us now, Holy Spirit, the paths of righteousness and lead us in the way of Jesus Christ. Hear us as we pray for those rocky places in our lives and in the world. Where we settle for shallow understating, give us the courage to go deep into your word. When we want to maintain surface relationships, give us the trust to commit to truly knowing one another. When we settle for enthusiasm instead of substance, give us the tenacity to stick with each other, stay close to you, and work for real, lasting, long needed change. Show us now, Holy Spirit, the cornerstone, and place our feet on the foundation of Jesus Christ. Hear us as we pray for those thorny fields in our lives and in your world. When the cares of this world threaten to obscure our vision and render us unable to hear your call, burn away the chaff and leave only the wheat that nurtures your beloved world. When we value wealth more than people and worship the idols of safety and security instead of our servant savior, cut away those dead branches so that we can dwell again near the vine that sustains us. Show us now, Holy Spirit, the wheat from which the bread of life is made, so that we may be fed and satisfied by the body of Christ. Hear us as we give thanks for the good soil only you can create. We rejoice that despite all that threatens to silence your good news, it still resounds throughout all creation. We praise you for your generosity and grace, your mercy and steadfast love that is new every morning. We give thanks for the abundant, life-giving harvest you freely offer and give us to cultivate. May the good fruit we bear bring relief to the suffering, comfort to those who mourn, and peace to those who have no peace. May our sowing of the seeds of your word heal the sick, bind up the brokenhearted, and strengthen the weak. May our daily scattering of the gospel help spread justice kindness and mercy all over your beloved word. Hear us now as we silently offer up to you our joys and concerns, our thankfulness and our laments.
We make our prayer in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to say when we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We give thanks to God through the offering of our gifts of time, talents, and financial resources. Your generosity of continued giving during these extraordinary and unprecedented times is a sign of your faithfulness and commitment to God as you give to this church to support its mission. Thank you for continuing to send your tithes and offerings to the church. Every coin, every dollar is like a seed planted, a seed that grows and is harvested in ways to love God, love each other, and to love the world. So let's go planting. Let's spread the word. Let's plant the gospel until all have heard. Sowing the seeds of life, reaching the lost, showing the living way to all who are tossed. Today's anthem is written by Susan Staples Bell and is sung by your virtual choir. The words in this anthem remind us we should not build our treasures on earth, but should focus on building up the kingdom of heaven. Hear now these words from Matthew 6, 19 and 20. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But stole up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And now our anthem, Build Not Your Treasures on Earth, Words and Music by Susan Staples Bell. Thank you. 
How beautiful, thank you. Jim and Janine will now lead you in the prayer of dedication. Let us pray together. Blessed are you, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of growth, may your word take deep roots in our hearts so that we may grow strong in love and live in the hope of your everlasting kingdom. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Imagine this. You're standing alongside the Sea of Galilee. A gentle breeze brushes your face. The water is calm. It's so peaceful, so beautiful. As we stood along the shoreline of the Sea of Galilee, a fisherman came up to the shore and a member of our biblical storytelling group climbed into the boat with him. Where was he going? After all, he was supposed to be sharing with us Jesus' parable of the sower. And now, there he was in the boat. And here we were, standing on the bank of the Sea of Galilee. Once near the middle of the lake, our storyteller stood up and began to speak. We were amazed that we could hear him so clearly. It was as if he were standing right next to us. This is because the mountains around the Sea of Galilee rise up in such a way that they create an amphitheater-like setting. And so we learned that this is where Jesus told the parable of the sower from a boat in the Sea of Galilee. But before we hear the words spoken by Jesus from the boat in the Sea of Galilee, what is a parable? Well, a parable is a simple, easy to remember story designed to teach lessons in ways that people can relate in their own personal life. Parables have multiple levels that impact people in unsuspecting ways. Since knowing the context of a parable helps us to better understand it, as you listen to the parable of the sower, keep in mind that in Jesus' time, seeds were incredibly valuable, and they were carefully sown by hand. And while farmers understood not every seed would germinate due to being blown away or falling into places that were not conducive to growth, they knew and trusted that when the seeds were in the right soil and were cared for, that the seeds would produce a strong crop for harvest. The more experienced farmers also understood that the process of growth is mysterious and that the rate of growth rests in God's hands. Admittedly, there were times when seemingly ordinary seed would produce an extraordinary crop, and at other times, what seemed to be good seeds produced little to nothing. It was a mystery. With this background information, hear now Matthew 13, 1 to 9, 18 to 23. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Later that same day, Jesus left the house and sat beside the lake. A large crowd soon gathered around him, so he got into the boat. Then he sat there and taught as the people stood on the shore. He told many stories in the form of parables, such as this one. Listen, a farmer went out to plant some seeds. As he scattered them across his field, some seeds fell on a footpath, and the birds came and ate them. Other seeds fell on shallow soil with underlying rock. The seeds sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow but the plants soon wilted under the hot sun, and soon they did not have deep roots, and so they died. Other seeds fell among thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants. Still other seeds fell on fertile soil, and they produced a crop that was 30, 60, even a 100 times as much as what had been planted. Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Now listen to the explanation of the parable about the farmer planting the seeds. The seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message about the kingdom of God and don't understand it. Then the evil one comes and snatches away the seed that was planted in their hearts. 
The seed on the rocky soil represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. But since they don't have deep roots, they don't last very long. They fall away as soon as they have problems or are persecuted for believing God's word. The seed that fell among the thorns represents those who hear God's word. But all too quickly, the message is crowded out by the worries of this life, the lure of wealth, so no fruit is produced. The seed that fell on good soil represents those who truly hear and understand God's word and produce a harvest of 30, 60, even 100 times as much as what had been planted. This is the word of the Lord. The seed of God has been scattered on the soil. May those who have ears hear and those who have eyes see. May the harvest be plentiful. As we walk towards the door, we're stopped. All visitors are subject to canine, electronic drug detection devices, and or visual mouth searches prior to being allowed to enter. Use of restroom facilities is prohibited during our visit. Cell phones, cameras, all electronic devices are prohibited. So are food and drinks. Not even bottled water is permitted. Our outer garments and personal belongings are left at the gate. As we enter the site, a large gate slams behind us. We walk through more security checks. Metal door after metal door is slammed, closing tightly behind us. It is an eerie feeling to know that there is no contact with the outside world. There is no way out except at the mercy of the guards. As we walk down the wide hallway single file, men laugh at us and refer to us as Bible thumpers, using words that can't be repeated. The armed guard tells us to keep walking, not to make eye contact with anyone, and to keep quiet. We are to walk within the narrow colored tile pathway so no one can reach out to touch us. We have just moved into the moderate level security at the notorious, violent, 129-year-old maximum security prison in Jessup, Maryland, a correctional facility that was eventually closed in 2007. Once we arrived at our designated room, eight men arrived for Bible study. We were told that last week there were five. Some who came last week brought friends this week. As they talk with other prisoners, there is a lot of excitement about how God is using them, even behind these locked doors. Then the talk becomes more somber as the prisoners discuss the crimes for which they have been convicted and are serving a life term in prison, mostly for murders, some very brutal murders. These men do not deny their crimes. They do not blame others for what they did. There is a strong sense of remorse. Some of these large, daunting, tough guys have tears streaming down their faces as they talk about the pain they caused their victims, the adverse impact their actions had upon the families and friends of their victims, the pain they caused even their own families, their friends, and others. They don't blame anyone for their actions. No longer are there excuses for why they did what they did. Instead, they talk about forgiveness and how by God's grace they have been set free, even though they are in prison for the rest of their lives. Here in the depth of this prison, many have formed a call to serve the Lord. Here in the depth of this prison, some are surprised with responses, responses that are now to the word of God that was planted and ultimately brought to harvest. Some kingdom seeds are thrown into your life and the lives of others in the name of the great sower God. One wonders, what kind of soil do these seeds fall on? It's Sunday morning, and in the middle school Sunday school class that I'm teaching, there is talk about favorite foods. And so I ask them, what happens if you go for two days without something to eat? They laugh as they dramatize being weak and tired and ravenously hungry. When asked what happens if they go for three weeks 
with their only meal coming from trash bins. They respond, they would shrivel up and die. One of them dramatically falls to the floor. Suddenly, the mood of laughter changes as a man and a woman and their two children from the nearby shelter walk in the classroom and share their story. Two girls begin to cry as they realize that one of the girls is in their class at school. They had no idea. So many times they had teased her about the way she dressed. By the end of class, they embraced each other. Several years later, a member of that class began a ministry for the homeless in Pittsburgh called Living Ministries. He chose to give up a high paying job to be on the streets, inviting others to hear about God's love, grace, and mercy, not knowing if he would have enough money even to pay his own rent. Surprise responses to the word of God planted in middle school were brought to harvest. They were brought to harvest after he graduated from college. More seeds were scattered. The harvest was bountiful as those who were homeless experienced new life and moved out to the street, becoming productive citizens of society, sharing the good news with others, helping others to realize that they can be more than they ever imagined, that they didn't always have to depend upon someone else to provide for their needs, that they now were turning to God. Again, some kingdom seeds are thrown into the lives of others in the name of the great sower God. One wonders, what kind of soil do the seeds fall on? Only time will tell, God's time. One afternoon, a call is received that a friend has been rushed to the hospital. Her neighbor is panic-stricken as the woman is strapped to the gurney, screaming relentlessly for help. What appears to be a psychotic breakdown is a reaction to prednisone. Hospital lies for several days. She slowly recovers as the medication leaves her system. While in the hospital, a woman in the other bed says, I notice you come and pray with her every day. It seems to help her. Who is this Jesus you pray in the name of? Will you pray for me? Yet another surprise response to the word of God planted and brought to harvest. See, God generously scatters seeds for a harvest. There are no boundaries as the seeds are scattered in a prison in Jessup, Maryland, in the hearts of middle school students, in a hospital room, and elsewhere. Many seeds are harvested in small, unimpressive, undramatic ways. We see the harvest in reflective words between friends. Sometimes when one's getting their hair done or playing racquetball or pickleball. It can occur in a conversation around the family table, in the still quietness of a morning jog, in the encounters of trade and commerce, in Bible studies and worship, in the bread and cup of the Lord's Supper, in the words heard today. The image in the parable of the sower is one of extravagant generosity as seeds of God's word, God's love, God's grace are scattered generously and indiscriminately everywhere and anywhere. Seeds imply growth. The kingdom of God is not so much an event as a process, not so much an arrival, but a journey, not so much a dramatic conclusion but a mixture of common and uncommon, ordinary and extraordinary growing experiences. The four types of soil in Jesus's parable represent different ways people respond to Jesus's message. Sometimes we receive Jesus's message and we hear it, but we don't really understand it. When fears, longings, or personal priorities take precedence, the values of God's intended kingdom make little sense. And so God's message does not take root in us. This is because the soil, the pathway of the heart, is too hard for the seed to bury itself and to develop roots. So the seed is snatched away by the first critter that comes along. Critters of sin, like fear, pride, self-importance, power, greed, and control. 
then there are the times when the word of God is received with joy and seemingly begins to grow. But once the initial excitement wears off, there is a tendency to fall back into old patterns and habits. Or one begins to question their newly found faith when something doesn't go the way that was intended. When a crisis occurs, or when there is realization that faith costs something more than simply saying, I believe. That faith necessitates practicing a trust that involves giving up selfish and sinful ways. In effect, the soil of the heart is too rocky for God's word to grow deep. And so the message of the sown seeds that once flourished now endures for only a short time because the roots are now too shallow to survive the difficult times. At other times, there may be a desire to follow Jesus, but the burdens of relationships and responsibilities get in the way. Some hearers have so many interests in life that the most important things in faith development get crowded out. Things like a person becomes too busy to pray, or one becomes so preoccupied with doing stuff and going places that there's no time to study or to read the Bible. Some become so overly involved in committees and good works and charitable service that there is little, if any, time to worship. These people are so involved with doing the church that they fail to be the church. Others choose to participate in activities that take them away from worship and learning activities about God. And so they grow deeper in the ways of society rather than the ways of God. Eventually, ever so subtly, God's living word is choked out by the desire to follow society's ways. Soil needs to be nutrient rich to promote growth. Nutrients such as the spiritual practices of prayer, routinely reading the scriptures, engaging in Bible study, and worship can and do lead one deeper into God's ways, enhancing the ways for God's transforming spirit to help them grow as disciples. When seeds fall on nutrient-enriched soil, faithful disciples are produced. Faithful disciples who are willing to take risks to share God's word, God's love, God's grace at all times. When seeds fall on nutrient-enriched soil, Jesus' words seek, sink deep into one's soil and captures one's heart, yielding a harvest that reflects the beauty and grace of Christ as lives are inter increasingly aligned with the values, the priorities, and the habits of God's kingdom, God's ways. Since we are a complex people, all four of these responses occur with us from time to time, sometimes simultaneously. But even though birds swoop down and devour the seed, or the sun scorches and bakes the ground, or thorny bushes choke out the growth of the seeds, the sower will continue to throw seeds of grace and love in all directions. And there will be a harvest filled with surprises and responses that are life-changing. Some kingdom seeds are thrown into your lives in the name of the great sower God. What kind of soil do the seeds fall on where you are? Will there be a harvest? I certainly hope so. Friends, in bold accord, Come celebrate the journey now and praise the Lord, ever experiencing some surprises as your seeds bear fruit and are harvested for the kingdom of God. Amen. And now Hannah will sing a verse from Come Sing, O Church in Joy. Let courage be our friend, let wisdom be our guide, as we in mission magnify the crucified. In bold accord, come celebrate the journey now and praise the Lord. The seeds were scattered and fell on good soil. Nurtured and cared for, fruit was produced, and leaders and new members represent the harvest that is in your midst. 
first we will commission Ted Smith as your newest trustee. Ted went through the same process as all the elders and the deacons did for their training. He was faithful in his attendance. Unfortunately, the day that we ordained, installed, and commissioned people, he had an unfortunate family emergency. And so now we welcome Ted and we invite him to participate in this part of the commissioning. Ted has served as an elder in another PCUSA church, and he served as the clerk of session. As an attorney, he brings special gifts for the role as a trustee. And so, Ted, are you able to respond now? I am. <laughs> All right. So I will ask you the questions. Do you trust in Jesus Christ, your Savior? Acknowledge him Lord of all and head of the church, and through him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Do you? I do. Do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testament to be by the Holy Spirit, the unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ in the church universal and God's word to you? I do. Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the confessions of our church as authentic and reliable expositions of what scripture leads us to believe and do? And will you be instructed and led by those confessions as you lead the people of God? I do, and I will with God's help. Will you fulfill your ministry in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of Scripture and by continually being guided by our confessions? I will with God's help. Will you be governed by our church's polity and will you abide by its discipline? I will. And will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry, working with them subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit? I will with God's help. Will you in your own life seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbor and work for the reconciliation of the world? I will with God's help. Do you promise to further the peace, unity and purity of the church? I do. Will you pray for and seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? I will. I do. I will. <laughs> and now the question specific to you for being commissioned as a trustee. Ted, will you be a faithful trustee, discerning God's call and lead in matters pertaining to the church's property and insurance policies? I will. So let us pray. A gracious God, we give you thanks for the calling of Ted to be the next trustee for the class of 2023. We pray that you will fill him with energy and give him the guidance and the resources that he needs to help move forward in this newly called position. May your blessings fall upon him and may the blessings of your love, peace, grace, and mercy be with the trustees and with the church in the days ahead. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Congratulations, Ted. You are now officially a trustee for the class of 2023. Thank you. Thank you. And, and thank you for uh dealing with the fact that my neighbor decided to do his lawn right right as we started all of that that's okay it was fine <laughs> seeds were planted and the harvest now yields eight new members with two others hopefully to soon to be received i introduce to you your newest members And so with your new members, some you already know. So we welcome Don and Mary. And we welcome Michael and Alice. Don, you know, we see him around the church a lot. And he and Mary have been very instrumental in helping to deliver, pick up the food, to deliver it to the Lamb Center once a month. And so we are grateful that they now are both members of this congregation. And we give thanks to Mary for the many ways that she has become more and more involved, how she was one of the first ones to be down in welcoming the bikers the second Sunday of each month. 
she loves to play um, different games, especially to go bowling. And as many of you know, she has won some gold medals for her bowling uh, in the Special Olympics. So welcome. Michael and Alice. Alice just recently moved to the Clifton area where um, she lives with her son, Michael. Michael, or Alice it comes to us um, with a strong faith, a strong background in um, her church where she was before, and she is anxious to get involved in any number of different areas. And so we welcome her. Her son, Michael, works for one of the government agencies with three letters in the initials, and so he can't talk a whole lot about what he does. We welcome him. He has background with Boy Scouts, and he has a background with um, IT, and he is also eager to become actively involved. Terry and Roth. Terry comes to us um, by a time of reaffirmation her faith, and Roth comes as affirmation of faith. They hope in the near future to um, soon become married. They were scheduled to have a wedding in the end of May, and that had to be changed to the COVID virus. Um, both of them started coming to church around Christmas time, and during that time, um, they started coming on a regular basis, getting to know people. Roth continues to work. Terry is retired, and Terry has also joined um, and participated in TLC. And then the virus hit. The next two you know and need little introduction, Ruth Ann and Marcia. Ruth Ann and Marcia both are very actively involved in the life of the congregation. And Ruth Ann is part of the Bi Women's Bible Study. She is always there to extend an extra hand, and we welcome her with open arms as well. And Marcia, who formerly was the preschool director and is now part of the 150th anniversary committee, um, we welcome her as well. To all eight of these people, we are so blessed that you are part of our church now. You have been received by the session, and this is our time of welcoming you. And I'm in hopes that after, at the end of the service, we will be able to see you um, on, on screen. I know some of you were not able to come today, but we're grateful to have your pictures so people can begin to recognize you. So let us pray. A gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for sending us new members, people with gifts, people who are longing to learn more about you, people who desire to be your faithful disciples. As we journey together with them, may our lives be one in which we are walking side by side, nurturing one another, sharing our God-given gifts and abilities in many ways. We welcome them and ask your blessing upon them and upon this church. In Christ's name, amen. And now as we go into the mission field and live into God's word, Hannah will sing the final verse of Come Sing, O Church and Joy. Only the word come is now changed to the word go. Go sing, O church in joy, go join, O church in song. For Christ the Lord has triumphed o'er the ages long. In bold accord, go celebrate the journey now and praise the Lord. Amen. May you go celebrate the journey and praise the Lord in all that you're doing. As we come now to a time of celebrating your ministries, Bill Watts, are you online? Yes, I am, Pastor Beery. All right, Bill, you have um, a message from the session to first um, share with the congregation. I do. Um, everyone, as your clerk of session, I have information for you. Uh, given the extraordinary circumstances of the pandemic, the session has authorized a virtual congregational meeting to be called for Sunday, July 26, 2020, at 11.30 a.m. 
for the purpose of receiving the pastor nominating committee's report and voting on the candidate that they recommend as CPC's next installed pastor. This vote also includes the approval of the terms of call as presented. This is a single vote on the candidate and terms of call. Only members of the Clifton Presbyterian Church who are in good standing may vote. Thank you, Bill. And indeed, this is exciting time for the congregation. Stuart, are you there? Yes, I am, Jerry. All right, Stuart, is there anything that you would like to add, please? Uh, a little bit, yeah. Okay, can you come a little bit closer to your mic, please, so that we can hear you better? We in the PNC are continuing to work on the transition in preparation for the congregation meeting. Uh, a couple of things that we will be doing is preparing a report to the congregation that will be issued a few days before the congregation meeting in written form so that the members have an opportunity to, to understand the background and our uh, evaluation of the candidate. Uh, the second thing that we are, are trying to create is an opportunity uh, for members of the congregation to have some way of interacting with the candidate prior uh, to the congregation uh, meeting itself. Uh, and in addition to that, we're also working uh, to develop a voting procedure that can be accomplished uh, within the, uh, the social distancing requirements that we all live with now. Thank you. So indeed, this is an exciting time in the life of the congregation. It is the time that you have been waiting for. This announcement that Bill made will be announced not only this Sunday, but for the next two Sundays. Information will come out as to how members will sign on for the congregational meeting and we are in the process of working out the voting, which will be similar to what you did at the last congregational meeting. So you have had some experience in, in uh, creating the polls and participating in the polls. So thank you to the PNC for all their hard work and their efforts and we look forward to hearing from the candidate on Sunday. July 26. Mark, are you present for reporting on mission? Yes. Um, uh, if you look in your email broadcast for the week, we have a section on Western Fairfax Christian Ministries, and that is really our outreach, our local mission outreach in this area, along with the Lamb Center and uh, Manassas Serve. Listed is in there are some of the food requirements. Uh, they're particularly challenged this time of year with the additional needs for people who are short of food. So there is a list there of uh, things that as you're at a grocery store, you can pick up. Uh, and then uh, at our recent mission committee meeting, we agreed that we would help provide uh, 30 backpacks for the Chantilly High School as they begin to make plans for uh, school this fall. And then they have also requested any uh, toiletries, uh, not, not as a part of the backpack, but as part of the other things we provide for Western Fairfax Christian Ministries. Uh, we have a large white cooler uh, at the entrance of the church. So over the next couple of weeks, if you have some of these materials, you can leave them in that large cooler and then we'll move those into the church regularly so that they don't accumulate too much. Uh, and this is a part of our outreach to the community. And we good, give thanks for the good work that Western Fairfax Christian Ministry is, do, is doing. And we get a monthly report. So if some of you want to know more about it, uh, just let me know and I'll send you that monthly report. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Mark. And also within the broadcast email that went out is information about two different Bible studies that begin this week. Al's will have a get together online on Monday. And if you have a birthday or an anniversary that's coming up, please contact Pat because next Sunday is a Sunday in which you will um, celebrate birthdays and anniversaries. Next Sunday will also be an exciting Sunday 
worship will be different. The mission team is going to um, present worship. There will be a series of videos and special music. I am on study leave for next Sunday, and so I'm excited about what the mission committee has planned for worship. It's going to be a great time. It will be slightly different than the um, normal format, but um, the videos will give you firsthand vision, sight of what is going on in the life of many of the ministries that you are currently planting seeds where the harvest is being um, coming forth in great bloom. And now the seeds are planted. You're ready to go into the mission field. And we do so by ringing the bell. So as you go forth from here, go forth knowing that the seeds are planted. The seeds are scattered. There is much love and joy to be experienced. And may the fruits that are born be a harvest that is plentiful. Go forward knowing that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit is with you now and forevermore. And together, God's, God's people boldly proclaimed, Amen. For our benediction response, it's the Lord bless you and keep you. The hymn that was prepared by your virtual choir and that was part of Fairfax County's special service. One voice, one family, one sacred humanity, an interfaith service to end racial bias and hate. Amen. And now we come to a short time of community sharing as soon as the recording stops. <laughs> 